Hi, it's Richard. Today is Saturday the 23rd of December, so I just wanted to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and thank you to everyone who's watched this channel and contributed. It's uh, meant a lot and it's actually given me a great outlet to pursue my passion in photography and especially film photography. And I love being involved in the film community. The film community has been absolutely amazing. Some of the Facebook groups and again people through here on YouTube with their likes, comments and um, yeah. Yeah, help and advice has been invaluable so yeah thank you very much and uh, yeah I hope you have a great Christmas so this year I find myself alone for Christmas my um, parents have jetted off on vacation so I'm gonna take inspiration from Timothy Ditzler with his day in the life series so yeah I'm gonna venture out on Christmas Day and I'm gonna go to one of my favorite places in the UK it's a bit of a drive it's three and a half hours but um, I'm gonna vlog it and yeah hopefully you might enjoy it. Yeah, so hopefully that'll be fun and uh, you can see the adventures I get up to. I'm not going to give too much away because this place is absolutely beautiful and hopefully for those that watch it, you'll uh, have something to watch on Boxing Day. <laughs> so the main purpose of this video is I have now had the Canon Pixmar printer for two weeks and I thought I would give a bit of a quick update also, anyone who's maybe looking for a last minute Christmas present <laughs> or even something to spend their money on in January. The Canon Pixmar printer is really nice. As I say, I've only had it for a couple of weeks, so I don't know the total ins and outs of it. And I'm not a printer expert by any stretch of the imagination. But being a, a graphic designer, um, I'll show you the way I use the printer, my workflow and some samples. So yeah. Let's get into it. So one of the biggest decisions when actually printing your work is paper. Paper will drastically change the way that your images look and it is one of the hardest choices to make. Some people like glossy paper, some people like matte paper. There is lots of choices from the main manufacturers like Canon, um, HP, Epsom and you can spend lots of time researching and trying different papers and seeing what fits and what suits your workflow and the style of your work but it is one of the most important things when you find the right paper the look the texture the feel the way that it shows the image there's nothing better so getting into this i've been researching and trying lots of different paper stocks something you can get which is a quite a good idea is you can get sample packs from the different printer manufacturers and these are a cost effective way for you to try different paper stock because you'll get one or two sheets of each kind of paper and then you'll have a better understanding a better idea rather than spending 20 30 50 pounds on an actual proper pack so i've been going through the different paper stocks to try and find something that appeals to me and i think i might have found a paper that i quite like the only downside is the way that it was supplied i happened to find this on amazon and this is a satin paper it is 260 grams satin A3 and for me this is a really nice feel and texture. I would like it to be slightly heavier but again I'm just starting out in this uh, venture of printing so at the moment this is not too bad. It's reasonably priced, it's £14. Um, the only issue that I found with this paper is it was supplied in a jiffy envelope and it didn't have any board or anything. So when the paper came, I'll show you on one of the prints, there is actually a crease around here where someone's dropped it or something and the paper is actually creased to a V, which is really annoying. And so as I say, when you print your work out on different kinds of paper, you start to see and appreciate things in your work, like whether things are too light or too dark, whether the shadows show detail and whether the tone goes to a black and a white so when you're actually printing your work it helps you finally in taking the picture because you've got a more of an understanding or at least in the editing process of your work so for me this was the Canon matte paper it's a nice reasonably weighted paper but there's parts of the image like around the hair here where it just looks too flat it's quite a sharp looking paper but yeah for me it just didn't quite suit my work in this image I then tried a gloss paper I don't know if you can see this the sheen and mm, nah. 
Mm -mm. <laughs> it, I'm not really a fan of gloss paper. Yeah, and while it actually does render better on the highlights and shadows, there's just something about this paper. I don't like the feel, the texture. Grates on my teeth. For you. <laughs> so one paper that I did find that I did quite like this one which is the HP satin paper This is 280 grams and to be honest, I really like this paper It's got a really nice texture to it. It's like an RC paper for dot print So it's got a structure to it But unfortunately, I can't seem to find this paper which is a bit of a shame But because this is a satin paper, I thought I would research satin papers And then as I say, I found this paper which is is the photo plus paper that I mentioned and this again it's a little bit light but it has the right style and texture and it's got a really nice finish to it um, as I said I don't know if you'll be able to see this in here just around here there is a buckle in the paper again I'm not sure whether that camera will pick it up just there there's a buckle in the paper Let's see if we can zoom in just here if you can see this buckle which is a real shame because this actually renders really sharp images, holds great detail, and is the paper that I'm probably looking for. Maybe it could do with being a few grams heavier. This is 260 grams, but for me at the moment, bang on. So now I'm starting to print some of my work. Again, the only downside is I say this buckle in the paper, which means that I can't use these as final prints. So at the moment, these are test prints to see how my images print and what I need to work on in terms of bringing out some of the detail like highlights and shadows. As you can see, for a non-pro printer, this actually renders some fantastic detail. As I mentioned in the first video, this has got three black inks. So you've got a normal black, a pigment black and a grey. I know that the um, Pro printers have different kind of inks. The Pro 100 has a black, a grey and a light grey. Um, and the Pro 10 has, so there's a photo black, a matte black and a grey. So I'm not 100% sure what the difference would be between the three printers, but you're looking at triple the price. So for the price that we paid for this printer, um, I don't know what you guys think, but to be honest, for me, that is pretty damn sharp. and I'm very happy with the results. So you guys will have to bear with me. I don't have any screen capture software, but the way that I work is I print from Photoshop. So what I do is I set up an A3 paper. When I print, I'm the sort of person that likes a white border rather than uh, borderless edge to edge printing. I don't know why, I think it just looks a lot classier. So I set up an A3 paper in Photoshop. The strange thing is the native resolution, Canon native resolution is 300 dpi. If you have an Epson printer, it's 360. I'm not 100% sure why. So in the paper, I set up 300 dpi, then drag over my images from the raw files or from the actual edited files and then size them into this. The blue borders that I have are set up as a scale of my camera image. So at the moment, this blue border is set up to scale down um, my digital image from the Canon 6D. Again, the ratio is pretty much similar for different formats, like 35mm. But this is a scan from the Pentax 6.7, so that's why the ratio is slightly different. When I scanned it in, I got these rough edges, but I actually quite like that, so uh, I've decided to leave it. This here, again, when you start looking at your work, is where you start to see details in the highlights and shadows on the screen you can actually see more of the background like the bed and the left eye um, when I print it out I'm not 100% sure how that's going to print so what we'll do is we'll load up some paper and we'll do a test print pretty much like in the dark room where you do test strip this for me is going to be my test strip <laughs> this file is also set up as a grayscale and the reasoning behind that is when I have printed off previously when I print in the RGB space, I'm getting magenta cast. So that's something that I need to look at and find out what I need to do to change that. The other thing that uh, 
some paper manufacturers, especially the big ones like Canon, Epson and Red River and, and paper manufacturers like that is, one of the important things is what's called an ICC profile. So when we press print and we go into our printer settings, on quality and media, it will tell the printer the kind of paper that you're using. So at the moment I've set it up to Pro Luster, which is giving me pretty reasonable result on this new Photo Plus paper. But as I said, when you are printing on other papers like Epson and HP, you can actually download ICC profiles, which will tell the printer what kind of paper you're using, and then it knows what colors to lay down. So as I say, this paper doesn't. It mentions on the front of the pack to use a gloss satin photo paper setting. So as I'm using a satin paper, I'm gonna use Luster, which is the closest to it in the photo papers. I'll go Pro Luster, print quality high, and print. The IP8750 is, for me, actually a very nice printer. I know it's probably not going to stack up sitting next to the Pro 100 and Pro 10, and especially the Pro 1, but arguably the results speak for themselves. And this, for me, is brilliant. I can put this on my wall, I can give it to people and I would be happy to put my name to it. Would I recommend the uh, Pixmart IP8750? Very much. So if you're in the market for a brilliant quality, brilliant price printer, then it's something I would recommend to check out. As I say, if your pockets are deeper than mine and you can afford the Pro series, obviously look at those two. Yeah, if you don't necessarily want gallery standard prints, but you want good quality prints that you can you know give to your family and keep for yourself then this you can't go far wrong with it so as i say thank you for watching i hope you all have a great christmas and i hope santa's kind to you so yeah hopefully see you all boxing day with a video from uh, my christmas day adventures but yeah thanks for watching and see you soon